product provided by Nintendo. Nintendo Labo is a platform built upon the Nintendo Switch. It reinvigorates the days of Nintendo making wacky and quirky accessories for its systems. Using basic cardboard, Nintendo Labo invites people of all ages to create extraordinary creations that leads to playing minigames with them, teaching you some basic engineering foundation in the process. Nintendo Labo Toy-Con 3 Vehicle Kit continues that trend while also trying to fix some of the issues I had with the first two kits that were released, the lack of fun software. The vehicle kit, as the name suggests, focuses on creating vehicles consisting of a gas pedal, a car's steering wheel, a plane center stick, and a submarine's control deck. While you do get some smaller form factor creations like a key for your Joy-Con or a paint spray can for customizing your car, the vehicles are the main attraction of the show. Each of these creations range anywhere from 30 minutes to about 2 hours to build them. In terms of the complexity and difficulty, I found them to be in line with the robot kit, often using things like rubber bands and ropes along with the cardboard. Following the make section of the Nintendo Labo software, you can easily follow the step-by-step -step guide that show you how to build each one of these vehicles. Although I'm much older than the target demographic of children, I really did enjoy building each one of these creations. They were more complex than the initial Toy-Con 1 variety kit, so younger children may especially need the help of an adult with this specific kit, but the end result was much more satisfying because of how extra complex it was. Regardless, so long as you follow the step-by-step -step 3D model tutorials, you should be fine. There wasn't really any lack of instruction for building each one of these creations. You can fast forward, rewind, and interact with the models on the Switch's display to make sure you're building everything correctly. The Discover section of the Lambo kits go in depth into how each one of these builds work from an engineering standpoint with the Joy-Con tech. As an adult, I pretty much learned how each one of these builds work just by building them, but to a younger child, the Discover section goes much more in depth, explaining how things like the Joy-Con's cameras interact with stickers to get the switches to activate. It's also done in a humorously written manner in the form of a text conversation with an NPC. Even as an adult, it was entertaining to read through these and get a more in-depth look at the technical models of the Joy-Con along with the cardboard creations. Once you finish building the vehicle kit, you get what I consider to be the main attraction for this specific Labo kit. You see, with Toy-Con 1 and 2, the creation aspect was great. Building a giant robot suit or just smaller creations like a fishing pool and a piano was riveting. Seeing slabs of cardboard eventually become this complex work of art was fantastic. That's no different here, but what is different is the software. With the other Labo kits, I found the games to be really shallow, not really having any depth to them and just not having much to do. I'd spend hours building these elaborate tools and end up actually playing with them for not much longer than it actually took to build them. The fun of creating these things actually outweighed the fun of playing with them. That's gotten much better with this vehicle kit. Now there still are a handful of smaller attractions with the vehicle kit. Slot cars have you playing with just the gas pedal trying to control the speed of your car to maneuver its way around straights and curves on a racetrack. It's a simple minigame aimed at getting a high score, although ultimately it is just a fun time waster that's on par with the Mario Party slot car derby minigame. The circuit game has you racing in a more traditional perspective, feeling like a simplified version of Mario Kart where you're racing against other players using the levers on the steering wheel to take out nearby enemies. The rally mode has you going through different world biomes as you race to each of the arches scattered across the map for extra time. It's an amazing way to test out how you can quickly adapt to the Labo controls with a timer over your head. The last what I would call minigame in this kit is the battle mode, where you and a friend can battle it out in cars with power-ups and special attacks. This was my favorite of the minigames and a ton of chaotic fun not only because the controls took a bit to get used to with the camera perspective, but the actual gameplay had me cackling with the absurd power-ups. One minute you're a tiny RC car and the next you're the size of half the map just trying to run over your friend. This was much more fun than let's say the slot car minigame and it gave me a bit of hope for the actual death of the main attraction, which is the adventure mode. Now this is how you should be doing Labo games Nintendo. The adventure mode drops you into a decently sized world consisting of different biome sections. Imagine Wii Sports Resort but with Nintendo Labo and being vehicle focused. This open world lets you either use the car, the plane, or the submarine to explore the entirety of the world to your heart's content. But what good is an open world without anything to do? Luckily, that's not the scenario here because each of the biomes get a set of challenges to complete. Popping balloons in the air, finding sucking treasure in the ocean, or perhaps just finding every gas station for each of the biomes. This isn't Breath of the Wild by any means, but the world isn't empty either. The missions aren't entirely complex, usually consisting of finding a collectible, taking one object from one place to another, or just going out to explore. The exploration though, even in a world that's so simple in visual design like this, is a lot of fun with the Labo kit. At any point you can seamlessly switch between a car, plane, or submarine by taking the Joy-Con key and inserting it into any of the controllers you've built. On paper it may sound simple, and maybe even tedious to constantly have to switch between them, but in practice it's quite entertaining. 
Driving through the city biome, I laughed with a smile on my face as I'd back up into a gas station, mess around with the many levers to pump some gas, and then boost out of there. Now while this is certainly a leap ahead of every other game so far released with Nintendo Lambo kits, I feel like it's only 80% of the way there, whereas the other kits were probably 40% there in terms of the software. Where I was asking with the other Labo kits, where are the games? With this Labo kit, there's definitely a game here worth playing. I just want Nintendo to evolve on it more in the future. Perhaps with the inclusion of Miis and more complex missions. If anything, the software with Toy-Con 3 shows the promise of well-developed software with Nintendo Labo in mind. It's not all the way there yet, but the best Nintendo Labo kit to buy right now. Offering you some of the best builds with solid software to actually go with them. Now keep in mind this isn't the traditional game I'd be reviewing on this channel as it has a ton of other aspects that I normally not consider with traditional games I review on this channel. With that said, based on the fun I had building everything and then playing with the software that was bundled with the kit, I'd give Nintendo Labo Vehicle Kit an 8 out of 10. For reference, I did review the variety kit, but that was before I gave out scores, but if I had to assign that old review a score, I'd probably give that kit a 7 out of 10 in comparison to this 8 out of 10. That does it for this review, if you enjoyed the video be sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and share the video with your friends, it helps more people find out about my videos, and I really do appreciate it. Thank you all very much for watching, hope you guys have a great day, and keep on gaming.